Most people go to the Middle East and Jerusalem on religious pilgrimage. Uh, I am not a person religious in the very least, and my reason for going to Jerusalem was far different. I went to run a marathon. The evening before the race, I stood uh, overlooking the Western Wall that majestically framed the, the Dome of the Rock, and I stood looking at it knowing full well that the Armenian quarter and the Christian quarter of Old City were directly behind me. And it was at that moment where I realized how important religion is in many people's lives, across time and across space, although it's not important to mine. And the very next day, I laced up my shoes for a very early 6.55 a.m. start from the Knesset, and I journeyed through all of Jerusalem, up Mount Scopus, back through Old City, the German colony, the American colony, eventually ending back up at the Knesset. And while I was running, I let my mind run as well. And I came to realize that religion, by and large, has a very prominent role in people's lives, particularly youth. As this chart indicates, we've moved from 41 to 45% of individuals in the 18 to 29 uh, category identifying as a very religious person. Additionally, I also thought of how religion is presented in the media. And as this chart suggests from Pew Research Poll, the third most reported story in 2011 on religion had to deal with anti-Muslim sentiment in America. And as I continued that long, long 42.2 kilometer journey, I realized that religion is not part of the problem. Religion is the solution, or part of the solution to many of the problems that appear on the surface of the American and Middle East dialogue that has been talked about so much. In 1993, as many of you are aware, Professor Samuel Huntington of Harvard suggested that there's a clash of civilizations. He may have been right in terms of a, a, a change in the language of, of war in the post-Cold War era, but he was wrong to assert that the civilizations of East and West, the West dominated by Christianity and the East dominated by Islam, were pitted against each other. Although, as some research suggests, particularly in the West, many individuals, particularly of the Catholic or the Muslim tradition, about 50% or 65% respectively, view their own religion as somewhat or very different to others. In fact, that's not the case. Many people suggest that religion is dead, and thankfully, the research that I showed on the first slide and some of the conversations that we've engaged with earlier this week indicate otherwise. Religion, particularly among youth, is very much so alive. In fact, I argue that we're living in post-materialist times. There's been other research from Pew that suggests our millennial generation sitting here this afternoon is one of the most engaged and considerate peoples that have ever walked this earth. For example, 54% of 18 to 29 year olds cite being a good parent as one of the most important things in their lives. An additional 34% cite having a good job that gives back to society as one of the most important things of their lives. That same demographic, only 1% of them cite becoming rich as being important in their lives. And religion, particularly the three great Abrahamic traditions that we speak of at this conference, and in particular to my pre the remainder of my presentation, the, Islam, uh, the Islamic tradition and the Christian tradition are not pitted against each other, but provide 
a fantastic, a new, and a novel way of approaching these issues. These Abrahamic traditions are all, excuse me, all protect the autonomy of the self, promote care for others, protect righteous action, and more importantly, continually advance the golden rule, treat others the way you wish to be treated. As we move away from this materialist times that has dominated Generation X and has become so excuse me, decisive in our action and in our thought, we have an opportunity to build on this realization. The day after my marathon, I walked very slowly up the Mount of Olives uh, with a very good friend of mine and an alum of this university. When we got to the top, Asia and I discussed religion, politics, society, culture, and education. We were there for a very long time. On our way back down, we continued to engage on issues related to religion and society. And I realized that by bringing education into this conversation, we have a remarkably unique and novel opportunity to engage in discourse. This is why the project that I have articulated and suggest helps to bridge the academic, the religious, and the secular, and some might suggest the former and the latter are synonymous, uh, communities together, particularly in my hometown of New York City. I hope to uh, develop and solidify while engaging with a culturally rich and diverse community of thinkers, of scholars, of academics, and of religious persons, and bring them together in a forum that's housed at a university where academic freedom is protected first and foremost. Through a series of panel discussions, lectures, lectureships, brown bag lunches, and so forth, I hope to solidify a program that can then be packaged, if you will, and have the opportunity to be exported to other universities that do not have the cultural richness of New York or the financial resources of Palo Alto's fine university this afternoon. This packaging uh, can take place in many ways, some of which involve the use of technology, such as iTunes University or the Celia Connect program, and largely will require uh, the continued engagement in curricula development, course development, reading lists, and demands that we engage youth on some of these most fundamental issues that are facing our times today. And as that Pew research earlier indicates, some of the most fundamental issues that touch all of our lives as millennial generationers. Like a marathon, it's a long race. We need lots of continued nourishment, of proper training before starting that 42 kilometers. And more importantly, when we're done with that race, we need to self-reflect to learn what we did right, to learn what we did wrong, as we prepare for the next marathon. Thank you.